rookie wide receivers. There was a whole bunch of them in this NFL draft. And there's a bunch of them that definitely could have great fantasy value and an impact this season here entering the 2021 season. So Jamar Chase, he was the first wide receiver off the board, and he's reunited here with former teammate Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. And the Bengals here, I thought they needed some offensive line more than a wide receiver, but right here they wanted to get Burrow and Chase back together. And these two guys here, you know the magic they had for LSU a few seasons ago. And these guys, it's going to be another good season. And Jamar Chase, he's one of the top rookies, obviously, entering fantasy football drafts this season. So he's probably a guy that will be targeted anywhere from the 5th to the 8th round of most fantasy leagues. And this guy, he's got speed. He could run the routes. And that rapport with him and Burrow, obviously you can't teach what these guys did in college. So I should expect them to take the next step and have a big season as Jamar Chase, where he could win Offensive Rookie of the Year possibly. And right here, this Cincinnati receiving corps is definitely stacked. We know A.J. Green left in the offseason, and he went to the Arizona Cardinals, but they still got T. Higgins, who was an impressive rookie, and obviously the great route runner and wide receiver in Tyler Boyd. So right here, Jamar Chase, I think he has a big season, and this Bengal offense is pretty loaded with those two receivers I mentioned, and also with Joe Mixon, who still can get the job done in that backfield. So Jamar Chase, he has a perfect landing spot with his former quarterback, and it wouldn't surprise me to see him be the best wide receiver in this rookie class in fantasy football entering the season. And Jamar Chase, he definitely will have a big season, I believe, and could have a Justin Jefferson type of impact in his rookie year like he did last year. And we saw Jalen Waddle go to the Miami Dolphins with a six-pick overall. Another guy reunited with his former college quarterback in Tua Tyler Boglia. And right here, this Miami Dolphin team, it's all about speed with them. And they built a roster with a lot of speedy receivers, a lot of guys that could get down the field. But the only thing with Tua, his arm strength didn't impress me at all. But right now, to get Jalen Waddle back in his offense is definitely a big piece here. And I think Waddle could be a top two or three wide receiver as well for fantasy football, just because with the rapport him and Tua had. And obviously, they know what each other are going to do, and you can't teach that when two guys have played for two or three seasons in college football. And now to bring it to the pros, these guys are going to have a head start on most rookies playing with their former quarterbacks. So Wada, like I said, he's got speed. He's a burner. He gets down the field, and Tua, he's got a pretty good offense here in Miami, and we'll see what the Dolphins can do. Last season, they choked it towards the end of the season, but now maybe Tua, he'll be comfortable with Waddle, and Waddle, he's a receiver I'll probably target in the 6th or 7th round, the most fantasy draft center in the season. We saw they signed Will Fuller. I know they got Devontae Parker, so Waddle, he'll probably open up the season as the third wide receiver here for the Dolphins, and he's a guy, though, that with still huge upside, like a C.D. Lamb last season, was the third wide receiver for the Cowboys, but he still got the job done. He still made plays, and Jalen Waddle, he definitely could be a good fantasy option in the 6th or 7th round, probably, as a target entering the drafts. Then we saw a Heisman Trophy winner, Devonta Smith, be the third wide receiver off the board in this one, the Philadelphia Eagles, trading up with the Dallas Cowboys a couple picks and getting their man, and right here, he should be a day-one starter in my opinion, it's Devonta Smith. This Philadelphia Eagle team, they've had wide receiver issues over the last two or three seasons. And this guy, he was an animal in Alabama. But the only knock on him, his route running isn't top-notch like these other guys, like Waddle and Chase. But obviously, he won the Heisman Trophy. And this guy, he could split defenses. He's a burner, and he could jump for the high point as well. And right now, him and Jalen Hurts... Over there in Philly, these guys, we know they're familiar with each other as well. And he's going to be a starter. Right now, it's just Travis Fulgham in that offense. And obviously, Jalen Rager, who's more of a slot receiver at 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, so, Devonta Smith, I think he has a great rookie season as well. But if I got to pick one, I think Jamar Chase will be the best rookie wide receiver this season here in fantasy football. Then we saw the New York Giants take care of his Tony. 20th pick overall, and that's a little surprising to me. The Giants went wide receiver in the first round here of the draft. They signed Kenny Galladay in the offseason. 
They signed, they got Shepard. I know Golden Tate, they cut. And they also got Darius Slayton, who's a big receiver. So Tony, he's obviously going to be the third or fourth wide receiver on this giant team. And I'm like the other guys. He's a guy I'm probably not going to target in the earlier rounds. Probably take a late round flyer towards the end of the draft. 13th to the 15th round range, I would take Tony. But Tony, he was a good ball player. Good senior in Florida, but he don't match up to these other wide receivers I mentioned. So right now, he'll probably be in the bottom half of rookie re receivers with an impact from that 7 to the top 10 range this season. Just because the Giants, they got a bunch of wide receivers like I mentioned. And they also got Saquon Barkley who could catch a lot of balls out of the backfield as well if he stays healthy. Then we saw Rashad Bateman, the fifth wide receiver overall, come off the board and go to Baltimore. And that's a great landing spot for the wide receiver out of Minnesota going 27th overall. Minnesota, good college, but right here he goes to the Ravens, and this is what the Ravens needed, a big wide receiver who can make some plays, and that's what they lacked last season when Lamar Jackson was struggling early in the season. They only had a couple receivers, and they were even desperate enough to sign Des Bryant, who didn't have much of an impact after being off for two seasons. But Bateman, another guy like Chase and Devonta Smith and Waddle, where I think he could step right in to the starting lineup here from day one with the Baltimore Ravens. And the Ravens, you know, over the years, they really haven't had that great of receivers. And over there, they got Hollywood Brown. They got a couple other guys like Humphrey, but they just don't have that impact number one. And I think Bateman definitely could be that impact number one this season here for this Baltimore Raven team. And it's a perfect fit in my opinion, and he does compare to Des Bryant in similar ways, jumping for the ball, good route runner down the middle of the field and making plays. Then we saw Elijah Moore go to the New York Jets, and this guy, he definitely fell down the draft board here, and the Jets, they didn't think twice coming into the draft, the junior from Mississippi, he was ranked the fourth best wide receiver on most boards, and for the Jets to get him as the sixth best wide receiver is definitely a steal. Him and Zach Wilson, they're going to team up here in New York. And the Jets all of a sudden have some weapons with Corey Davis, Denzel Mims, Jamison Crowder. Now you got Elijah Moore, Keelan Cole in the mix. And this guy, it wouldn't surprise me to see him be a slot receiver or step into the top two spots here of the starting line for the Jets. And Moore, he's definitely a player you could target in the 8th to the 10th round of your fantasy league this season. And most of these receivers you could target probably 7th round or to the 10th round or later. But I think more, he was a big pick here for the Jets. And he's a guy that's definitely going to have fantasy impact. And he can help your fantasy team as a third receiver or even a flex option. Then we saw Terrence Marshall Jr. go to the Panthers in the 2nd round. Another LSU wide receiver. And Terrence Marshall... He's a pretty good ball player. And the Panthers, they lost Curtis Samuel in the offseason. So Marshall, I think, is going to take that spot as a gadget guy like Samuel was who went to the Washington football team. And it's a good pick here. LSU, they always produce great players. And we see each and every draft them have double-digit players come out. And Terrence Marshall, I think, has a good season here. He won't be a starter right away with Sam Darnold than this Panther team because they still got DJ Moore. You still got Robbie Anderson on the contract, but he'll be a third receiver and a gadget guy and a guy to target in the ninth round or deeper, in my opinion. Then we saw Nico Collins go to the Houston Texans, and the Texans, it's going to be a bad season for them, no doubt about it. They might be the worst team in all of pro football. It's pretty close. He went third round, 26 pick. Overall was the senior wide receiver from Michigan. So Collins, he definitely could possibly step into a starting role. They just don't have much over there in Houston. They lost Hopkins and Will Fuller over the last two seasons. I know they got Randall Cobb. They signed Alex Erickson and I believe Dante Moncrief. But those guys really won't have much of an impact. So I could see Nico Collins stepping in as the number two or three wide receiver and have an impact. But we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. If it's going to be Watson this season, Tyrod Taylor, or even Davis Mills, who they drafted in the third round from Stanford, is the Texans, is going to be the starter. It's just a mess there. So Nico Collins, you probably target him later than these other receivers mentioned 
just because his quarterback is up in the air, who's it's going to be. Then we saw Ronald Moore come off the board as the ninth best wide receiver in this draft. And Moore, he won second round in this one, surprising me, Ronte Moore, to the Arizona Cardinals. But right now, I don't think he's going to have much fantasy value is more out of Purdue because that Arizona Cardinal team, they're loaded on offense with wide receivers and weapons. They got DeAndre Hopkins. They got A.J. Green. You got Christian Kirk, who showed the amazing signs last season and big game and big playability. So I don't think Moore's going to have much of a fantasy impact, maybe in keeper leagues and dynasty. But entering redraft leagues, he's a guy I'm probably going to stay away from. And the 10th wide receiver that got drafted in this one was Dwayne Estridge to the Seattle Seahawks from Western Michigan. So the senior here, he went second round, 24th pick. And this guy, he was way down there in the rankings. He wasn't even in the top 10 wide receivers graded coming into the draft. But the Seahawks, they went with a veteran in terms of college football who was a senior. But he's another guy that's not going to have much value. Maybe he'll win that third wide receiver spot over there for the Seahawks. But obviously they got the two monsters in DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. And I know David Moore left in free agency. So maybe Etridge will win that third wide receiver spot. But he's a guy right now I'm not going to target in redraft leagues. And even Dynasty and Keeper, he's a guy you really won't have in mind. So the rookie wide receivers, there's going to be an explosive amount of guys entering the 2021 season. And we'll see who has the best fantasy football impact.